Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today we're back with the Movid model IR715-2 Internet Radio Receiver and FM receiver and DAB receiver and network media player and USB media player and so on and so forth. Now, we have already seen this thing before. As a matter of fact, we have been working on this thing before. Back then I installed this big transformer and as a consequence of installing this big transformer, since the output voltages of this thing are a bit higher than what the original transformer had, uh, I also had to modify the power supply part. I had to improve the heat sinking of uh, the 7805 voltage regulators. This has two of them. Well, today we're back with this thing because I'm not entirely happy with what I've done here. Now, this toroidal power supply, the advantage that it has is the unit gets a bit heavier, so... Well, previously, if you were going to press a button, the unit would always slide backwards and you just, you know, you had to kind of hold it from up above and press a button. Now, uh, with the added weight, you can actually operate this thing with no problems. The disadvantage, of course, is with the higher voltages, we are actually having to get rid of a lot more power. Because uh, the thing is, if, uh, you know, this thing puts out 15 volts, I believe, instead of the 7 volts that this was all designed for. So, to get from 7 volts down to 5 volts, these uh, ICs will have to get rid of 2 volts. And at a current of 1 ampere, that means we are burning 2 watts in heat. Now, with this new transformer, with the 15 volts, to get down to 5 volts, 10 volts need to go, at a, once again, at a current of uh, 1 amp. That would be a whopping 10 watts that uh, we're just uh, transforming into heat. Right here on the back. I'm really not happy with that at all. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to get... Uh, well, I'm probably not going to get rid of this transformer here, just to kind of keep the, uh, keep the weight. However, I'm going to be modifying this. We're going to put in a totally different power supply. I'm going to get rid of this uh, linear power supply thing. Instead, I'm going to put in this. This is a switch mode power supply, as you can no doubt see, rated for uh, 5 volts at 2 amps and 12 volts at 2 amps. Uh, the plan is to just uh, bring this into here and then we're going to have this uh, much more efficient uh, switch mode power supply design and no more heatsink burning energy unnecessarily. Now, the problem that I ran into, this, now, as we look at the connector, uh, some of you guys knowing things about computers might say, well, that's obvious, we got 5 volts, we got 12 volts, and 2 grounds. That simple. Well, it's not that simple. The problem is, the yellow and the red are both 5 volts. And... One of them has a label, as you can see, it says right down there, U, 5 volts, then ground, ground, and 5 volts without a U. Now, the thing was, what am I going to do with this? I got, I got 5 volts out of this thing, and not 2 times 5 volts. So, I had to do a little bit of uh, experimenting, and as a matter of fact, uh, in the end, it turned out to be quite simple. Uh, we have the usual 5 volts will operate the radio, and the U 5 volts apparently is only needed when you're using the USB right there. That actually is the power supply for the USB, which I think is kind of interesting that they did that separately like that. But it does make sense, because the main voltage regulator that... Um, does the power supply for uh, for the for the actual receiver part 
uh, that does get pretty warm, so I'm thinking this is probably delivering just about as much current as it possibly can. So it's a good idea to put a separate uh, voltage regulator in that will do another ampere, and that can then go into the USB jack. So I guess that's what they were doing there. So since this new thing is going to be a lot more powerful than what we previously had, I'm quite optimistic that we're just going to be able to hook the two 5 volt rails together and that's going to be it. I did already measure this and there is uh, absolutely no potential whatsoever between these two, so you know, like, I mean, if, if if you'd measure and there were like, you know, 10 volts worth of difference between this one and that one, you definitely not want to put them together. But there is zero volts, so I think we can just tie them together. So anyway, that's the plan. I'm now going to tear this all out and start working on replacing this all. Question, of course, is going to be, is this going to interfere with the uh, signal that we are getting out of this? That's going to be the question. So the first thing I'm going to do is a temporary hookup. I'm going to wire in this to uh, to the voltage input. And if we get some nasty background noise, well, I guess we're just going to have a bit of a problem. And if we don't, then it ought to be fine to put this in permanently. And here we have the temporary hookup, which is, in fact, very, very temporary, as you can see. Um, and I'm happy to say it seems to work. I haven't tried the internet radio part of it, because I would expect that all this kind of digital magic is not going to be disturbed by a switch mode power supply. However, what I was concerned about is the FM radio, and I am happy to report that does work perfectly. I went through the frequency band and I did not find any kind of unusual noises anywhere. So I'd say it's okay. Didn't surprise me all that much because I did look at the output of this uh, power supply on the scope before I even wired this in and it was silent. It was pretty much perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this into here permanently and then this whole unit is going to be a whole hell of a lot more energy efficient. Now I know in the past I've never been a big friend of energy efficiency and that kind of stuff but since I'm now paying my own electric bill uh, this kind of stuff does get kind of important and uh, you know <laughs> I'm not paying electricity just uh, if it if it heats the room so anyway uh, kind of a funny thing the uh, RDS text this radio station <laughs> that's kind of weird looks like kind of a Christmas theme they got going on there it looks like a bit of snow it's kind of funny Let's take some measurements just to prove my point here. I'm measuring the input current with the old transformer setup with inefficient linear regulation. We're getting about 51 milliamps of input current out of the mains. The transformer and linear power supply are all gone and as you can see I have the switch mode power supply hooked up and secured in place using a high-tech cable tie. Yeah, I know, it doesn't look pretty, but it works, it's safe. That's going to get wrapped into some electrical tape later on for extra safety. Well, I can hear you asking, what does the input current do? Well, exact same test conditions. And... Wah, 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 wah. We're actually taking about two milliamps more than before. I mean, what the hell? No more heating going on on the heat sink, and still higher input current. I guess this must be one hell of an inefficient little unit. Gee. Oh, well, anyway, I don't have another one. I guess the, uh, well, I don't know. Either it's inefficient or the unused 12 volt part of it does do something. I don't know. 
Try and error, this project definitely didn't work as well. But, well, now I got it all in there and wired up and stuff, so I'm not going to bother putting that back in. Oh well, c'est la vie. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Still, I hope this was somewhat interesting to you guys. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.